This is how easy it is to create a white border around your image ready for social media. Here we are in Photoshop. This is a high resolution process image. And then I'm just gonna press the play button down here. And there we go. That's how easy it is. I'm gonna press Control and zero to make it bigger. And now what I've got is a low resolution image with a white border and a drop shadow should you need it. That's adaptable, I'll tell you in a minute. All ready to post all over the internet. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to create the same thing with a watermark signature on it. And if you want an even easier solution, that there is a Photoshop action and you can download it for free. It's in the link of the description of this video. Download it and it will turn any high resolution image into a low resolution image with a white border ready for you to be posting on social media. So now let's go back into Photoshop so I can show you how to do it step by step and it will also enable you to customize it to your own needs. For instance, you might want a thinner border, thicker border, no drop shadow, with a drop shadow, etc. So let's go into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you exactly how it is done. Okay, so there's the action there. And like I said, that's free for you to download. If you think that that's a thick enough border and you want that drop shadow, then just download that action, press play, and you're ready to go there. And now let's show you how it's done. I'm just gonna go into the history panel here and I'm gonna go back to the original image, press control and zero to full screen it. Okay, so this is a high resolution image, all right? This is as high as this picture actually goes. I've cropped it, I've adjusted it in Lightroom and I've exported it as a JPEG. Now you can do this in Photoshop as well, you don't have to use Lightroom, but before you start this process, make sure that you've flattened your image so that you've just got one layer or a background like it says here. And the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is create a low resolution image, okay? So full size JPEGs like this, you don't wanna be uploading to social media for a couple of reasons. One is, it's gonna take ages because it's a massive file. And two is some social media platforms don't compress the images. So someone will be able to download your full resolution image. And uh, you, know, you don't want them doing that unless they're paying you, okay? So we need to create a lower resolution image and that is very easy. We're gonna go image, image size. We're gonna change the resolution for screen because like I say, this is for posting on social or websites, etc. So a general screen resolution is 72 and make sure you've got pixels per inch selected there. And then a good standard size so that it looks nice on social media is around 1500 pixels along its longest edge, okay? Now this is a square image, so it doesn't actually matter whether I put it in the width or the height. So I'm just gonna select the width there, type in 1500. And if you've got this lock symbol showing, it will automatically adjust the height for you, okay? Make sure you've got resample ticked and it says automatic there and click OK. And I'm gonna press Control and zero, that's Command and zero if you're on a Mac, to full screen it. And now we've converted that high res image into a low res resolution image which is suitable for screen. Now let's go and add the white border. The first thing that we need to do is unlock this layer. So like I said to you before, this is only going to work on a flattened image. It's one layer, okay? At the moment, this is a background and we need to unlock it. And we're going to unlock it by clicking the unlock symbol. And now we've got a layer, okay? So we've got one layer. This is now our final image. And now we're ready to add a border to it. Now, don't worry, we're not going to save over the original uh, image. We're going to make a copy when we create that border. So to create the border, we're gonna come up to image and this time we're gonna to go to canvas size. We're gonna make sure that relative is ticked and that your anchor point, this, that's this dot here, is in the center, okay? We don't want it to be over to the left or to the right, top, etc. It needs to be in the center. We're gonna work with pixels again, so make sure that you've got pixels selected here. And we're basically gonna add a border of 200 pixels. So quite simply, we type in 200 into the width and we type in 200 into the height. And that's going to give us an even 200 pixel border 
around the edge of our image. And it doesn't matter if you've got a square image, portrait, landscape, that's gonna work exactly the same. Then we're gonna click OK. I'm gonna press Control and zero again to full screen it. And now what you can see is we've got our image with a border around the edge. And now quite simply, we need to add a color to the border and we can make that color whatever color we want to. It's commonly white, so let's do that. And we do that by going to our adjustment layer icon down the bottom in our layers panel. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna to go to solid color. And like I said, you know, you can choose whatever color you want to. You can have a green border if you want to, okay? But we're gonna have a white border, so I'm gonna put my color picker right over to white. I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna drag this color fill layer to the bottom so it goes underneath the image. Now at this point, you could leave it there. Just save it as a JPEG copy, and you've got an image with a white border. Me personally, I like to add a little bit of a drop shadow, so that's what we're gonna do first on this one. And to do that, we need to select the image layer, which is this one here, and we need to double click on this area here of the layer, or we right click and we go to blend in options. And it brings up this box here called layer style. Then down the bottom here, you've got the option to add a drop shadow. So we're gonna tick on drop shadow, and then I'm gonna select the word drop shadow, which brings up all of my options here. And this is your opportunity to adjust it to however you see fit. So for instance, you can adjust the distance. I mean, look, you could do that if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, you could spread it more if you wanted to. You could change the size, you know, and all of them things, okay? But I just like a, a nice soft border, if I'm gonna be honest with you. So it sort of just about shows, if that makes sense. Just like that will do me. You can change the opacity if you want to as well, so you can make it stronger or not so strong. But again, I think I liked it where it was. Then we click OK. And there we go, we've created a drop shadow for our image and we can click off the effects here if we want to. So that's without the drop shadow and that's with it, without and with. Now all you have to do is save it as a copy. Very easy to do. We go to File, Save as a Copy. Then you need to obviously choose where you're going to save the picture. I'm gonna save it in the original folder where the high-res JPEG is. As it's for social media, you generally want it to be a JPEG, so make sure that you've got JPEG selected from this dropdown. And it's also a good idea, because it's for the internet, to have this box ticked here, which basically assigns the standard RGB color profile to it, and then you click Save. The JPEG options box will appear again, because it's for the internet, you can compress the image further should you need to. So eight's quite good, to be honest with you. It reduces the file size, but still keeps the quality of the image, all right? So as my recommendation to change it to the quality of eight there, leave the rest of the options as is here. Click OK, and there you go. You've now saved a copy of that original high-res JPEG with a border and a drop-down shadow. I'm gonna just open up the folder where these images are. And there you go, that's the high res version. And you can see down the bottom here it is 8.95 megabytes. And then here is the low res version with a border ready for posting all over the internet. And that is only 634 kilobytes, okay? Let's double click and open this up. And there you go. That's the internet version. And here's the high res JPEG version, all right? Now let's close down that box and close down this one. So that's a really simple way to add a white border to an image so that you can post it on social media and it looks really, really cool. But what if you wanted to do the same thing, white border, drop down shadow, etc., but with a watermarked signature across your image, you know, down the bottom, etc.? Well, that is just as easy to do and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. But before I do, I wanna tell you about the courses that we run over at theschooloffphotography.com. If you want to learn photography, Photoshop, Lightroom and loads and loads of other photography things properly, and that's the key word here, if you wanna learn things properly so that you retain the knowledge better, you create much, much better photography, then you need to come over and see us at theschooloffphotography.com where we have loads of online courses 
that is gonna push your photography to another level. We teach tens of thousands of photographers all over the world this beautiful craft and we can do the same for you. So come over to the schoolofphotography.com and check out our five star rated courses and start to learn photography and Photoshop properly. Right, let's go back into Photoshop now and show you how easy it is to add a watermark as well as a border. So firstly, I need my signature logo and that's in this folder here. And as you can see, there's lots of signature logos that I have made here and I could choose any one of them, white ones, black ones, etc. And if you wanna know how to create a signature watermark logo for your images, I've got another YouTube video for that. I'll put a, a link for it in the description of this video and hopefully there's something coming across your screen now so you can go and watch that. But once you've created one, they're very easy to create. You just grab it, drag and drop it on top of your image. You resize it to whatever you want it to be. I think about here will do nicely. You click the tick at the top or you press enter to apply it. And again, you can leave it here if you want to, but I like to make it a little bit opaque. So I'm gonna to go to the opacity slider in my layer and I'm gonna bring it down to around about 75 like that. And then save it as a copy again. So that is file, save as a copy. And this time I'm gonna call it copy two and click save. All the settings the same as before. I'm gonna leave it at eight and click okay. And there we go. Let's open up the folder so we can see all of the images and that's here. And this one here is the original JPEG. Again, it's a high res JPEG there you can see. And then I've got my copies, which are of a low res, 634 kilobytes, that one. That one's just a little bit more. So let's open it up. High res JPEG, low res JPEG with a border, low res with a border and a watermark, all ready to be shared all over social media and make you look good. And if you want an even, even quicker way to add a signature and a border, you can add that signature into your action so that it adds the signature and the border all at once at the click of a button. And we actually teach you how to create actions and watermark signatures just like that over in our Photoshop course over at theschoolofphotography.com. So I do hope that you've enjoyed that and it's gonna help you out and make your work look fantastic all over social media. If you did enjoy it and it has helped, please tell us by leaving us a comment, like the video, subscribe to our channel for more of this kind of stuff and share the video with your friends. Now, I've gotta be honest with you, if you don't do that type of stuff, we cannot bring you this type of stuff and it really is as simple as that. You engaging in this video helps us to bring you more of this type of content. So it's been great showing you this little technique. I hope to see you in the next video where I'm gonna show you loads more photography and Photoshop techniques. I'll see you soon. And remember, if you wanna learn photography properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com.